I was born into a household where fish was always the main animal protein that we always took. During one regime, one military regime, there was a, a call for Operation Feed Yourself. It was just a call by the government that everybody should go into fish farming. Without any training, without any knowledge, people started digging what I would call water holes and just dumping the fish in. <laughs> they ended up with frog ponds <laughs> because uh, toads and frogs were jumping in and also producing, and so it was a, a, a mass failure. They thought you could just dig any hole at all in which water can be collected and then you put the fish in. We saw that we needed to do a lot of training, a lot of education, and also a lot of research with them. Ghana is, I must say, is one of the countries with the highest fish consumption. In fact, we are about the first in West Africa. So aquaculture is very relevant to us. It is the most accessible animal protein to the ordinary person in Ghana. So aquaculture is farming aquatic plants and animals. Same as agriculture, just in water. And aquaculture, when I started out in my various programs, is accounted for about 5% of the food that we eat, the seafood that we eat. Now it's climbed to 50% of the seafood that we eat. There are 2,000 or more species that can be grown and are grown, and none are traditionally domesticated. Aquaculture has been done in various forms for hundreds of years, the Egyptians, the Chinese, but not as a science, more as a, an art form, and people really couldn't repeat their successes. And through the 70s, the whole world has put a lot more effort into understanding how to grow fish. We thought of aquaculture back then as a system. So it's not just the animal, but the medium that the animal grows in. And in aquaculture, the medium is three-dimensional, it's water, and it's a lot more complex in many ways than terrestrial agriculture. At some point, we really can't go out and hunt our food. I mean, if you're a fisher, you go out and catch fish because you wanna put it on your table and eat it, that's fine. But if you go and decimate a stream to sell it to a supermarket, it isn't okay, and you wouldn't do that for turkeys or for chickens or for any other kind of product. We grow them, we farm them. So that's where aquaculture has taken off. PNUST is an abbreviation for Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And it's located in the central part of Ghana in Kumase, the capital of the Ashanti region and the university was named after Ghana's first president, Kwame Nkrumah. It's the second biggest public university in Ghana with a student population of close to 50,000. In Ghana, when I first traveled there, I went and I looked at their ponds and they had the signage from each previous project just leaning against a building with cobwebs and stuff all over the place. And I said, well, so what happened? So all well, the money ran out the money ran out, so we're not gonna keep things going. I said, well, that's, that isn't institutionally sustainable. What was happening is those projects, they didn't share the budget. The beneficiaries would just get money, but they didn't know how it was tied to what they were doing. And then when the money ran out, the faucet turned off, and why should they work for free? So we had to put a different kind of model into place, and they saw that. And we thought about well, what is going to generate enough resources so you own this and you go forward. Following the injection of funds by Aquafish USAID into our university, I discussed with my colleague that look, let's try and create an aquaculture program so that we can specifically train people in aquaculture so that they can go out there and manage. So in Ghana now, we are the only university with a BSc aquaculture and water resources management. And we have a graduate program, MSc and PhD also in the same area. 
So the whole process took over six years from the initial inception of the idea to actually accrediting it as a full course in the university. Six years ago when the program started, our first batch of students were 13. Then in the fourth year of the program, the first years who arrived were 28. So that was a massive improvement. And since then, we've had numbers in excess of 40. We've had 42, and this year we have almost 50 students in 2018. So the numbers are really increasing. So the course really is gaining popularity in Ghana and then even in the university as well. This program was very different from the existing program we had. And one of the things was that because the classes were smaller, there was more opportunity to do hands-on training. You could even bring the lab in class. We also developed an MSc around that time and I was the lead for that. The Aquaculture program is a very unique program where when the students are done, they are equipped and they are actually complete scholars who can undertake various tasks independently. Aquafish was really instrumental. Oregon State was also instrumental. So some of the courses we ran are very similar to what is run in the US. So I'm Abigail Bachiteshi, and then I'm, I started my program in August 2015, and I completed this year, 2019, in July. I learned a lot during the program, so I then had a passion. I come from the western side, where we, we are mostly into fishes and aquaculture. And we once did a project there and I realized the need for more specialty in aquaculture. I just decided to go into aquaculture so that someday I could come back to my community and help the farmers. I think it was quite a feat <laughs> getting the program running within a very short time. Um, and so a lot of things came into play. One was the willingness of the faculty to go an extra mile in working. You had to go through a lot of steps, so many hoops, and got something established. That is a story that is pretty incredible. It's been a long process. I first joined this university in 1990. Everything was really bad. The farms and the ponds were in total disorder. And um, it was quite demotivating to work in such an environment. They helped us a lot with equipment, with even their capacity. They would sometimes come and tell us, look, you can do this better by this way. And through the funding that they gave us, we were able to actually upgrade the ponds and bring them to an acceptable standard. I think Africa's greatest resource is its people. The institutional strengthening part is the most difficult. It's not what we ever got funded to do. But it was so important because how do you make lasting change if you don't change an institution? If you have an institution that isn't that successful or keeps having people drop out for problems that you see and you can solve, why not work to solve those problems? We are very grateful to Aquafish because uh, it would have taken us ages. Yeah. And we have trained so many, so many. So many have benefited from scholarships. I can say for sure we've trained more than 500 farmers across the country. Because it's a new field and they see great promise, they've made faster headway than many of our institutions in the U.S. So they're really well positioned to go forward. I'm just so thrilled every time I see that. And it's really thanks to them. They did all the work. <laughs>